Vanessa, good to go. We are live on YouTube now. Okay, sir. Good evening to one and all present here. I'm Sunami Koti, and along with my co-host Anushka Jaju, I welcome you all to Tolani Maritime Institute's newest venture, Campus 21. Connate with the noble outlook to serve as a supporting pillar to the cadets of TMI. It is with utmost pride that I introduce you all to Campus 21, where in 21 stands for the quest of a 21st century marina. Knowledge is power. This is one quote that I consistently rely on as a source of motivation. But has one ever celebrated a truth table for this quote? Is knowledge really sufficient? In my view, the answer is a clear no. Knowledge lays the foundation. It may also construct the structure, but the ultimate cementing always comes from experience. And as cadets, what better way to equip ourselves with experience than gaining them from the horse's mouth. That's right. We are privileged enough to introduce you all to Compass 21 as a one-of-a-kind lecture series, wherein we'll be inviting industry experts to pour in their valuable inputs for the concerted benefit of everyone present here. Honestly, the best way our institute could possibly inaugurate this lecture series would be by inviting the very experts that call Alani Maritime Institute as the alma mater. And that is exactly how we have chosen to begin. For we have Captain Vijendra Dogra and Mr. Rajneesh Chobe, both of them alumni from TMI, as our chief guest for the evening. So uh, before I introduce our first speaker for today, I would like to tell the audience that we shall be having a question answer session at the end and we encourage you to ask questions in the question answer part of the zoom meeting um, also the chat will always remain open so any one of you who's you know wants to share your enthusiasm and if you have any comments you may write in the chat box moving on i would like to introduce our first speaker to the audience today captain vijendra dogra is an ex tmi and from the batch of 2004 bsnt he is a master mariner and a marine surveyor with his experience spanning over 14 years. Sir's expertise and consistent performance has earned him recognition in this industry. His strengths include marine HSCQ and survey that has been backed by several years of training. Being a marine surveyor gave Captain Dogra a lot of experience in risk management, handling investigations, communications with authorities and clients relevant parties for getting the desired results. With this, I invite Captain Dobra to address the gathering. Yo, hello everyone. Uh, good evening uh, to everyone present, especially TMI faculties. Uh, actually before joining, I didn't know the faculties will be there. So, uh, Please bear with me. Uh, well, uh, uh, I'm. I feel very proud to be here and uh, addressing you all. And uh, let's start with the topic straight away, uh, because I know everyone is so much eager to know more from us. So I will save time on speaking, and I think we should give more time for you to uh, ask us questions. So, okay, let's, you know, I, I just give you a few ideas before you can ask questions so that uh, I think uh, with this, uh, most of the questions will be eliminated. Uh, so let's start with jobs. I, when I was asked to speak here, the most concerned question uh, the organizer asked me is about jobs. How is the scenario? How is the market? So I'll tell you first important thing, don't listen to all around what is going on. He's saying this, she's saying this, it, it all doesn't matter. Uh, for my own experience, I can tell you is there are so many ships under construction. Uh, I am based in Hong Kong. So I know that really dry docks are full 
uh, new buildings are full so i don't think there will be a problem of jobs as such yes market is down because of covid 19 obviously but uh, it is it's only a cycle in a market uh, there is always ups and downs and uh, i believe uh, our senior fatigue faculties they must be knowing like 87 that time how bad the situation was and uh, the cycle will come again now is a bad time uh, i'm expecting it should improve very soon the as soon as the you know covid is under control everything should be back to normal very fast so i believe everyone should just uh, focus on studies now try to gain knowledge and instead of uh, following uh, you know other people's opinion and ideas just follow in the real world don't go into imaginations uh, like for example i tell you is um, when i was appearing for my uh, mmd exams and uh, okay let me add something to that I happened to clear all my MMD exams very smoothly and uh, I topped my master's exam. So when I was appearing for an exam, people were like, oh, they take oral like this, they take oral like that, they will not uh, let you pass very easily. But it didn't happen with me. Why? Because everyone is different. Who will face what? No one knows. No one knows the future. So it's all up to you is all in your hand just try and see what happens till the time you don't wear the shoes you cannot judge how good or bad it is okay so uh, another is uh, topic was asked for competition yes there is a lot of competition going around uh, i saw the number of maritime institutes uh, in india has increased a lot uh, every year there are a lot of students coming out okay so don't think there is no competition yes there is competition but which field doesn't have competition every field has competition so whether it's it maritime or um, any anything you talk about there is a lot of competition so uh, there is nothing new in this when i was joining that time also competition was there the number of companies were less the companies taking the number of cadets was less yeah so in that way there was competition so how you do uh, how you what you do for that so study well this is the only idea uh, i believe every must everyone must have watched three idiots right so the three idiots says uh, knowledge is important right the success will follow you and I, I can tell you from my own experience is very much true. I focused on knowledge. Uh, the TMI faculty, they uh, gave us a very good knowledge. I kept it with me. I'm telling you today also when I'm studying, uh, nothing is difficult for me because I kept that knowledge with me till now. So take it seriously and use that knowledge, success will automatically follow you. People will try to find you for the job instead of you finding the job. That actually happens. Uh, so I think cheer up. There is no worries about there's no jobs. There is no worries about uh, like you will be not get the food, okay? Jobs are there, but you need to be the right person to get the job. Be a useful person on board. No one likes a useless person on board. Okay. If you are useful, everyone will like you. Everyone will want to keep you. They will give the salary what you want. Okay. So this is how it works. Be useful. Gain knowledge. Okay. So as I remember, Tolani had writing everywhere. Uh, attitude uh, decides your altitude so keep your attitude positive don't spread negative ideas it has no meaning no one knows the future you have to decide yourself okay uh, thank you so i think you know i'll keep my wordings short
let the people ask me more to get the knowledge. Thank you, Anushka. Thank you, Captain Dobra. Those were some really motivating words. I will now introduce you all to Mr. Rajneesh Chaube, a technical superintendent with Synergy Man Marine Group, who graduated from TMI in 2007 with a BS in Marine Engineering and holds a valuable 11 year sailing experience on board container ships from NYK Ship Management. Mr. Chaube last sailed as a second engineer in 2017 after which he joined Synergy to work as a technical superintendent in the environmental team that is responsible for the MARPOL compliance of about 250 ships. We welcome you, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the kind in introduction. Okay. When I was told about this uh, meeting, I, I was very excited. I, I wanted to meet uh, all the cadets, fresh people from our college. Yeah, uh, in an ideal world, this, uh, we would have come to campus, interacted with you. That would have been a great thing. But I know because of this pandemic, and even as I came to know now, the first year has not yet uh, visited the campus yet. So that is another thing which is different from what we experienced. Of course, things will get better. You will. Uh, go to your college, you will visit the college and you will see how uh, TMI and how uh, a, per a person is built means the cadets you, I see cadet in front of everyone's name, cadet, so and so cadet. And uh, it's actually when you go there, you will see how a cadet is formed and how an officer is formed out of a cadet. Okay, so that is what I have taken from Tolani and uh, I'm very happy to come here and speak with you. Okay, and uh, I, I know people uh, nowadays, as I said, because of the pandemic, they have this uh, dilemma in their mind, what will happen in future, whether I'll get a job or uh, there is a market going down, but this is not only with the shipping industry. You know, the entire economy has suffered because of the pandemic. And shipping industry is no different, the same. Okay, so, but the thing is, even in this bad times, I say bad times because the economy uh, as a whole has suffered. But if you see the shipping industry, it has survived. Okay. And uh, why? Because of the structure we have. And the thing is, the entire global trade is being handled by the shipping industry. Okay, so uh, there may be small downfalls, but shipping industry it always uh, stands up and again starts growing. So now, uh, yes, quarter one of 2021, we have seen there was a decline, but with this quarter, the market has started going up. And you know, I have I'm as I am being introduced. I'm working in a shipping company, and uh, believe me, when I joined this company uh, three and a half years back, we had uh, 150 ships with us, and now we have more than 350 ships managing. So uh, things are growing. We are taking deliveries. We are having a lot of. Uh, new takeovers, yard deliveries, as Captain Dobra also said, he has seen a lot of yards with new builds. So market is growing. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Yes, but the landscape of job is changing. That uh, you all should understand. It is not like a conventional job. Nowadays, uh, let me compare this first to the airline industry. You must have seen in the airline industry what happened when the pandemic started. Uh, there was a halt and a lot of people lost their job. But thankfully, this did not happen in the shipping industry. And it will not happen because entire global trade uh, is supported by the shipping industry, as I said. Okay. So you don't have to worry about your future, your job. You are uh, at a, you are in a profession or you will be joining a profession which will sustain itself in future. So you don't have to worry. You, uh, what you need to do is upgrade yourself, 
keep working on your knowledge your skills and most importantly attitude okay so uh, nowadays if, uh, when when the pan pandemic started uh, as you know the shipping industry has uh, before the pandemic used to work in a conventional way very slow uh, towards the technology uh, um, technological developments which uh, we see but now with the pandemic everything started to work fast and now we are having remote audits remote inspections and a lot of technology has come in into the system and which is also added by the imo regulations okay uh, i am sure all of you have studied about the new upcoming regulations and most of them are uh, targeted towards the environment okay so since i am working in the environmental compliance team for last three and a half years i have gone deep into those regulations i have worked to, to implement those regulations on 250 ships uh, which i yeah, i am responsible for as a technical superintendent in the environmental team okay so uh, you will see uh, a lot of talks about decarbonization and all those things yes they and digitalization so things will go together things will happen uh, you see uh, now because of these upcoming regulations older ships are getting scrapped newer ships are coming into the market the trade is changing now you see oil tanker market uh, had gone down uh, last year because of the pandemic but it is picking up but you see with the upcoming uh, new regulations things will change now lng uh, dual fuel engines are coming up and there are many things uh which you must uh, all understand because you need to upgrade yourselves you need to know uh the digitalization which is going on in the shipping industry you have to understand it's not only the marine engineering or the nautical science uh, which is going to help you you need to have some it skills also so and uh regarding opportunities since uh, you all are worried what we will what will happen after uh after our fourth year uh, i i know uh, many of you would have been placed in good companies but unfortunately some of you are still waiting for placements so don't you worry because uh, it's not only sailing and there are a lot of opportunities where you can have tremendous growth uh, because of uh, new regulations coming in there are new opportunities in the market okay and if you upgrade yourself you if you uh, study about certain particular aspect of uh, the shipping industry you will you will uh, come to know better on where you can fit yourself okay so you don't have to worry about uh, getting jobs uh, and all because see there are a lot of requirements in the market okay uh, it's all, it's all supply and demand and the people nowadays instead of looking on quantity it is the quality so improve your quality okay improve your knowledge improve your skills improve your attitude and you will get uh, in good place and then you can uh, grow from there and you have a vast uh, uh, opportunity vast ground of opportunities where you can uh, excel currently in the shipping industry yes with the imo's uh, goal of decarbonization and other things there are a lot of things coming in not only for the uh, people who want to sail but also people who want to work in the shipping industry in the commercial side in the uh, in the ship building side or anywhere so there are a lot of opportunities nowadays so you don't have to worry about getting jobs and uh, yes so uh, and now i would uh, and here by this thing and i would like two people to come up with some questions which i can uh, respond and we can see we can have a discussion of sort okay so thank you and uh, let's see what you have uh, got what you have to ask to me let's see uh, thank you sir for your encouraging words so to be very honest both of you have answered almost all the questions that our cadets have especially about the placement and the job market scenario uh, we have a, a question here from piyush krishnadas he asks 
I, I would like to ask you, which was the most difficult situation in your life which you faced on board? Now, sir, I know that both of you have uh, immense experience and it would be nice if both of you share your um, take on this. Okay, Chobi ji. Okay, I'll, I'll take the lead here. Okay, uh, well, the list of difficulties are very big. So I think uh, this whole session will go in that if we start discussing one by one. So let me, okay. Uh, I'll tell you which I face the most difficult thing is to get the job done. Okay. This was the most difficult part for me. Why? Because uh, being an officer, you are a responsible officer, right? So you have to take charge of your crew on board and get the jobs done. But everyone is not same you know you have to use different tricks for different people different way of dealing people so just sitting in the room you think by studying and getting cgpa alone uh, you can handle the things on ground that's not the thing uh, like why i like uh, tolani so much the reason being they organize uh, so many sports you see so why they organize so many sports? Why they organize uh, morning parades? Uh, the reason is taking charge, taking control, getting the people to do the job. Okay, and this um, experience, what you get in Tolani is very valuable. Okay, so this uh, getting the job done on board is really difficult. Uh, is uh, and especially when you're dealing with uh, you know multinational uh, people around you uh, you don't know which word or which action they will get offended okay so you have to be like very careful on what you speak how you speak the command has to be very clear simple uh, these all things what you are learning in tolani right now is very important keep that with you when you're sailing on board and when you have stars on your shoulder uh, is actually difficult. Okay, Chobi, you take over. Thank you, Captain Dogra. So uh, the difficult parts uh, which we face on board depends on the people, okay? So uh, when you start, when you go on your first ship, that was my experience I would share here. When I went on my first ship, that was uh, the most difficult uh, part for me to survive and to spend my six months. I spent six months aboard my first ship and that was when I was in college. It was part of my internship in my fourth year when I went on my first ship. And uh, yes, it was very difficult because we, we have new people and it was the first time we were going out of the college environment or home environment and meeting new people. And some of them are behind you to... Uh, of course, they, their uh, aim was to uh, teach us or to, uh, so that we can gain some experience and we understand. Of course, we had been trained in our college to follow, to follow instructions and all those things. So that definitely helps when you go on board. And uh, yes, if you can uh, uh, see when you go on board ship, you uh, do your job. Things are difficult because you are away from your family, your friends. But uh, if you can engage yourself in the jobs which are at hand on board ships, of course, you will never be free on board so that you are thinking. Uh, and once you uh, move up the ranks, then the difficulties will change. Like uh, Captain Dogra said, getting the job done. That is one part of the difficulties which we face. Motivating the on board. In this uh, pandemic, you know, there are a lot of seafarers who are stuck on board ships, they are not able to get sign-offs, they are not able to go home. So motivating crew uh, or motivating yourself, sometimes it becomes difficult. So that is why uh, it is very important that you concentrate on, on your job, what is at hand and enjoy what you do, you enjoy uh, doing it. So that is how I spent, uh, uh, I used to spend my time ships and just to tell you uh, on a lighter note my first ship was very difficult but my second ship when i went captain dogra was with me 
uh, on board. We were cadets. He was the deck cadet. I was engine cadet, and one of my friend was also there. So we, three of us were there. We enjoyed a lot. So it's not always you will get difficult times. There are a lot of good times. You enjoy a lot on board. So yes, that's it. Yeah. Um, thank you so much, sir, for your enlightening views. So I have one another question for, and it's both open to both of you. That um, living in this pandemic, one thing that we have realized is that we need to, um, you know, focus more on the mental health uh, issue. So uh, because we are at shore, we are not having that kind of um, training that we, where we need to follow the instructions rigorously as compared to when we were on college. So, so the next question is that uh, when we go on board, what is that exact kind of mindset that a seafarer needs to develop? so that he can be uh, away from home and still concentrate on his job. Okay, Chobi, I'll take a lead again. So, okay, uh, I think most of you uh, are at home because of the pandemic. Okay, I'll do, I'll tell you an exercise. Yeah, I think most of you won't be able to do it. Is uh, in a day, uh, six hours, don't use your mobile switch it off, leave it aside, forget you have a mobile. If you can do that, yes, then I think you are as good as on ship. Because nowadays, connecting with everyone is the, the, the core value. Okay, everyone is behind mobile. Even uh, on board ships, I have seen people, uh, they do work for uh, six, seven hours uh, watch, and then they will go and play on mobile and again, continue with the watch. It's like, you know, they cannot live without it. So I think if you can live without your mobile, yeah, you should be able to survive it. And uh, yes, uh, if you can stay away from your mobile, away from TV, laptop, yes, definitely you will like, but on board, it's not like just sitting for six hours. When you are on board, you are always engaged, especially when you start uh, your career uh, at your junior rank, you will always be engaged. So don't worry about getting bored or anything. Uh, you will enjoy it because it will be a new experience for you. And people who are curious, I, I had been curious in my life. So when I went first time in the engine room, I saw that engine, I was amazed. And that particular thing uh, motivated me to work for another six months on board the same ship without uh, family, without friends. You make friends on board. Yeah, people are there on board. They are all there. There are 20 to 25 people on board. You make friends, you enjoy. And yes, that is how you can spend. Of course, uh, as you said, you have not uh, been trained in such a way because of the pandemic, you have stayed home and you have not uh, been trained to stay away from home and uh, all those things. But yet now, when you are there uh, at your home, uh, try to concentrate on whatever is being taught, whatever you study, uh, when you go on board, when you practically see those things, you will uh, uh, easily spend uh, two or three months exploring things, exploring the ship. On your first ship, you will explore and that will keep you motivated uh, to spend your entire contract. Okay, thank you so much, sir. This was really uh, helpful. Yeah, sorry, sorry. I just want to add uh, a few things I remember. Uh, Captain Ayer uh, told us uh, uh, is uh, you should develop a hobby. Okay, you should always have a hobby. But playing mobile and playing games is not a hobby. That's a different thing, but uh, you should have surely some hobby at hand. Okay, uh, so whenever you feel lonely, you feel homesick, follow your hobby, uh, make your mind refresh. Some people prefer meditation. Uh, some people prefer, uh, you know, uh, like Japanese, I know uh, they like to fight, uh, what's that called, punching bag. They would like to punch on that. That is their way of handling things. So you develop some way of releasing your, uh, you know, loneliness and uh, uh, homesickness. But I believe uh, in cadetship and your, uh, uh, as well as engine and deck. I'm suppose uh, 
you will have no time to do all this so i think should not be a big problem for everyone but uh, remember one thing be rough and tough develop some hobby for you um so both of you talked about um steering yourself away from mobile phones so any particular reason for that while being on board yeah well uh, actually uh, it was related to more of more to your question is how you will uh, survive on board ship alone and handling things alone okay so when you have a mobile in hand you feel somebody is there to support when you have to make decision you send a whatsapp to your friend i'm ah, i'm making this this blah blah card i'm buying and making decision you look for support uh, for your decision whenever you making some a uh, big achievement you want support for that achievement but on ship you don't have any support you are alone you are a master of the ship you are the officer in charge there people are looking to you to make decision you cannot send a whatsapp to your uh, uh, cadet and ask him will you support my uh, decision right so there's the whole idea about staying away from mobile yeah use mobile but uh, just keep it to yourself okay thank you so much sir so tsunami would like like to take over the next question yes sir so sir i wanted to ask like considering you're an alumni from pmi i'd like to ask your reasons for choosing this institute and how did graduating from pmi especially prepare you for this role yeah i'll take the lead here okay uh this uh, joining tmi for me it just happened okay uh, i tried uh, uh, to get through a lot of college uh, not a lot of colleges only one or two and then i came to uh, this tmi and when i saw the campus that is if you uh, hear everyone from uh, my batch or my juniors they they were all uh they saw the campus and they said okay i will study here for the next four years i will not go anywhere else so that was the first feeling which uh, and that is why i chose uh, tmi and then uh, i was uh, in touch with a lot of friends who said okay this uh, maritime industry is good you get to sail on board you get to, to have adventures of course there are other parts of it which no one will tell you which we experience when we go on board yeah uh, but yes uh, that was the time when we joined but uh, once uh, i joined spending four years here uh, in the college it prepared us uh, a lot of things we did in first year we were forced to do some things uh, which we felt at that time okay what is this where are we and uh, sometimes yes when you talk about mental health even in first year that mental health uh, goes down <laughs> uh, but again once that one year passes like i said once your first ship is you have completed your contract on first ship same thing you must have experience once you finish your first year it things become easy you start to know things you start to understand uh, more you learn more and then you have a clear uh, path now what you want to do okay so that is the time and then uh, when the campus uh, selection comes campus placements come and when you get selected that is one of the best feelings still one of the best feelings uh, i have uh, work experience of more than 15 years but that one campus placement that particular thing is still one of the best things which i experienced uh, getting uh, to know okay i have been placed in nyk like that okay so that, that is uh, a big motivating thing and once you go on board uh, the kind of seniors you get the kind of training you get that kind of ship you get that is all a factor but the thing is how you take all these things as a learning that is the most important thing and that will prepare you for your entire career mm, well uh, i selected the institute is uh, well my family background is from the navy itself so i knew how it is what it is so i just uh, happened to know the tolani standards and uh, uh, 
uh, how they train, uh, what facilities they have. And um, I like the um, system in Tolani. So that was the main reason for uh, selecting uh, here. Thank you. Sir, I see this question being asked in uh, different ways. So I'll just sum it up for you. Um, somebody wants to know, sir, what kind of off uh, onshore jobs are available for uh, merchant navy officers, and how do we get into that? As in, um, what are the rules and regulations for taking up such jobs? Okay, uh, I'll I'll speak first. So. Let me start is deck side and engine side uh, have different jobs uh, in this profile. Okay, so like uh, common areas uh, which overlaps is in the ship management companies. Okay, so there can be marine superintendent for deck people and technical superintendent for the engine sides. Okay, um, but I still uh, will like if if you ask me for a guidance i will still say you set a goal to achieve your highest license like chief engineer and master license okay and after that you should have about uh, two years of experience on hand then if you shift to onshore then we are talking about something big uh, just you got fed up with this and uh, you want to just, uh, you know, have some bread at home and you want to join something. Yes, um, there are some options out there. Um, you can do further studies if your family is rich or uh, I prefer you sail up to the highest level possible, earn some money, big money, and uh, then continue your studies. Uh, well, there is no as such rules and regulation in place for shore job because shore job is a totally different uh, minefield actually. Uh, the selection process, uh, the promotion process is totally different. Uh, it's, it's unlike ships where you pass your exam, you get promoted. You know, it's, it's totally different uh, scenario. Uh, but I like from my personal experience, I will suggest get a master license or chief engineer license, uh, sail for at least one or two years. And uh, in meantime, uh, try to get more qualifications on hand. There are a number of institutes uh, in UK, India, Australia, so many places, get some memberships, make connections, networking, socializing. These are the keywords. Uh, seafarers are very weak in socializing this is a fact okay so you have to grow up more than that socializing you start uh, as soon as you are officer you start socializing make connection make networking and uh, plus you gain extra uh, knowledges like uh, for example somebody likes law they can study maritime law or uh, somebody likes insurance they can go into insurance uh, marine insurance studies so uh, do some research uh, when you are on board ship instead of doing whatsapp uh, you can get knowledge make uh, memberships with them and make networking that's how you land an onshore job uh, if you try just uh, directly trying to shift i think maybe a clerk or a manning agent or a of operation officer is the maximum you can reach uh, which is i don't think is worth after coming to tolani Yes. Uh, yeah, Captain Dogra summarized it well. So yes, there are a lot of uh, options available there if you uh, go for higher studies. If you are not willing to go for higher studies and you have completed till your highest license, uh, master license or chief engineer's license, then the world is open for you. Means uh, there are a lot of things. And yes, connections are required. While you are sailing on one of the company, you know uh, people in that company or through other uh, things as he said socializing very important and you will you will land up in some good role it can be anything from surveyor to superintendent to uh, faculty professor anything you can try out anything even if you want to shift away from marine industry if you are not uh, 
if you got interest in some other industry even uh, chartering commercial uh, shipping that also is open for you yes you need to have good network yeah thank you so much sir for your kind information and this will be really helpful to a lot of people i'm pretty sure so so the next question is uh, pretty frank and upfront to both of you and you can answer it in according to your opinions so because you have been in this profession for so long what's the most rewarding and the least rewarding part of being in a profession like merchant navy mm, okay so i think is uh, quite difficult question but i i feel is uh, you know like uh, elderly people they say uh, there is a time for everything right uh, like having a discipline uh, is important you have fun when is time for fun and you work hard when is time to work hard so there is a age when you don't have any liabilities uh you don't have to worry about your parents because they are uh, quite in a good uh, age and uh, you don't have a loan at hand uh, other than student loan and uh, really is not uh, so much troubling to leave home because you don't have a wife and kid at home so in young age i i think you should try uh, merchant navy there is no harm in it but then there comes a time when you need to be at home uh, so then you start your struggle for onshore job and then you know you have to find uh, ways to get it done uh, like uh, for me it wasn't uh, easy because i didn't i told you the difficult part is socializing so i think uh, maritime a good thing is uh, money discipline uh stature uh you know the respect you get is really plus point and uh, minus point i don't think is uh, so much but uh, yes how will you staying away from your home uh, some people may find it uh, negative but i feel is not so much a negative because that's your age that is your earning age where else you want to go definitely so yeah uh, uh talking about the rewarding part of this career uh, you will understand when you join a ship and you start uh, uh, once you clear your exams your mates or your uh, meo class 4 and when you start earning uh, you will when you compare yourself with your other uh, schoolmates or anyone who uh, in some other industry then that will be a feeling for you okay uh, i am earning better than them that is to be frank yes that is the first thing which you will feel okay i have got a good rewarding career and that is as captain dogra said in your young age uh, you should sail as much as possible uh, till you get married okay and once uh, that happens again uh, there are other things you never know of course because we have seen people who are uh, who have kept sailing till uh, their age of 60 or 65 also okay so it all depends it all depends on your uh, situation uh, your family how it is and till you feel you are okay to go on board and work and it's an inter- interesting job uh, whether you are working on deck or an engine room it's an interesting job to sail from one port to other take a ship the entire ship to uh, from one port to other port and that that is exciting that uh, has some adrenaline going in your uh, this thing okay so uh, this is uh, uh, that is the most rewarding part of this career the things which you experience if you compare to other careers nobody else will experience that that you have to understand okay yes of course there are some things which you will feel that you are away from family away from friends sometimes you feel lonely but these are part and parcel of the game but uh, most of the time you will feel uh, if you are interested in this field you will feel you are at the right place with the right things yeah definitely makes sense and um, i just like to add to captain vijendra's point so i talk to my mom and i tell her ki i'm going to stay away from home and everything so my sister she is a graphic designer and uh, she has been away from home for the past 7 months because her job is in bangalore so she also can't come 
so that is also what she tells me ki um, it's the it's the same for both of you right like you are also going to stay away from home she is also staying away from home so that uh, what captain vijendra said that definitely makes sense and to everyone present here so thank you so much uh, for your insights next question will be from uh, cadet tsunami thank you sir so i've observed that the first years here are extremely curious about the placement scenario so if you could kindly ease them out by giving some tips on how to be the best candidate out there and some interview strategies that could boost their confidence probably also add in your experience with your interviews <clears throat> okay so placement scenario if i give tips then everyone will take the tips and then everyone will get the job right yeah see there is competition around okay so you have to stand out you have to show that you are a different uh, person okay but let me tell you uh, that every company is not looking for a topper okay every company is not looking for a genius i remember uh, captain banerji uh, when he came uh, new to the institute he told us uh, that they know they don't need a 90% or 100% scoring uh, candidates they need smart people okay who can get the job done okay uh, as i remember when uh, c span came for the interview during our time they asked uh, for the candidates from 6.5 cgpa to 7.5 cgpa they don't want uh, more than 7.5 why everyone was shocked okay the reason is uh, they may have their own reasons but i feel personally is they are not looking for a genius they want somebody who can get it done okay smart people so in a interview you have to show the company people that you are smart they are not looking for theoretical knowledge uh, our college Uh, when they invite companies for interview they have already provided them with your score cards marks cgpa your curriculum activity and blah blah everything okay so this interview is not about what you have learned sitting in the class okay it is about what you have done special other than the class what do you know more about imo regulation new which is coming for example okay uh, is if uh, can you carry out a safety drill uh, you know what is safety drill how it is done so practical aspects will be questioned in interview okay when i went for my masters exam uh, i cleared my masters exam within 15 minutes okay so the reason why why i was cleared in 15 minutes only they asked me only four questions in total the reason what i feel personally is they asked me a practical question i gave them a very practical answer free frank open okay these people who are coming for interview they have lot of experience years of experience at hand and in interviewing people the way you open the door they already know what you are okay so don't try to pretend be yourself show them that you are smart they will give you some situation handle it okay and when something is going on in college take interest try to handle it if you try to run away from things stay in the room just with the books open yeah you will become topper you will get uh, scholarship and all but clearing interview is not the same toppers may fail the uh, interview also so smart is more important okay chobe ji yeah rightly said captain dogra and just to add to few points uh it's not only knowledge it's the attitude which is very important uh when uh, you go for your interview how keen you are on learning that is also important how uh, easily you understand things that is when uh, we went for our placement interviews uh, the things what uh, what they gauged was 
uh, the person uh, it's not the how much uh, gpa they are having a cgpa or uh, is a five pointer or six pointer but they also saw how the people have improved and how the people have uh, when they were asking questions they, it was as said uh, it was more on the practical aspects what you have done other than the studies like uh, there there will be some projects going on uh, in your workshop i am talking about the engineers uh, here uh, if uh, you have some projects something you can show that i have done this i have created this and uh, or i have uh, made something work some uh, like in our times uh, i remember we had this workshop uh, training uh, and uh, when we went to our third year uh, we were given some project a group of people there was a pump a centrifugal pump and it was just dismantled and we have were asked to assemble it and keep it and uh, there were five to six people uh, i took the lead and uh, we assembled that pump and actually it started working of course that was the first experience for us when you go on board you will be assembling a lot of pumps and a lot of things you will be doing but doing that the first time in college was the uh, was a very good feeling and when i went for my interview i told them they were asking me about my experience and i told them uh, uh, we did this with our team and uh, this was done and if they see that uh, you are uh, interested in things doing things practically learning things that is the most important thing they are looking uh, for in the candidate sincerity hard work yes Uh, thank you, sir. So, as you know that the internship forms the most important aspect of our curriculum. So, what qualities are the first thing that you want a cadet to have? What qualities do you think that we can inherit from uh, better sail for better sailing experiences? Mm, okay, uh, let me start this one. So, see, there are two perspectives uh, you have to understand. one is your chief officer in charge he is your training officer on board and uh, second engineer in charge for the engine room okay so you have to understand is from a officer point of view you should be able to understand the command or the request what they have told you clearly and execute it in the same way and report it back okay there are three steps to it listening executing and reporting back okay i think tolani has been already taking initiative in this and they have been telling you to do it but i know you know this cadet behavior they don't always interest in all this but i'm telling you on board people who can listen properly they can execute the commands properly and they can report back uh, accurately are most liked okay i'm not saying is like you become uh, like robots but use your brain because safety is your own matter you have to look out for yourself yes but the basic idea about the command when it is given should be followed or at least you should report back that so and so thing was not able to be done or whatever okay second thing is make yourself useful okay for example i had a cadet is uh, uh, we teach him taking sounding okay but uh, for i think about a month he still cannot go alone and do the sounding okay uh, there may be so many reasons but uh, you have to think from the officer point of view Uh, the life on board now is so much hectic so the officers they don't have that kind of luxury of time to uh, keep teaching you same thing again and again so become smart uh, be attentive uh, learn the thing as soon as possible say uh, two three times they they teach you you should be able to pick it up okay and uh, since uh, your theoretical knowledge uh, is very solid so this can also give a very good impression on board ship 
so this will also help uh, having a you know smooth life on board people who is uh, burden on board uh, we call it actually dead weight on board so they are basically cargo just going from here to there and no one likes them it is it is very similar in every industry okay so uh, if you are a dead weight on board if you cannot help your uh, uh, in charge officer so uh, is then your life won't be that nice okay so be smart uh, use your knowledge so is not school here this is a professional college okay whatever is being taught to you has some meaning there okay just don't uh, read it for getting marks marks even a donkey can get a marks okay but what is the difference between a donkey and a carrot okay so make that difference uh, if there is no difference then you know, the life will be bad okay chobi ji yeah uh, talking about the internship part uh, when i was second engineer i had a lot of engine cadets uh, trained under me and uh, many of them from tmi your seniors maybe yeah and uh, one thing i would tell you the positive thing is uh, i had other uh, college people also from india uh, there are other colleges we had uh, i had under me few people and some uh, filipinos and bangladeshi some other cadets also we had but uh, just to tell you just the name of tmi is such that and even uh, the cadets which we found on board people usually like tmi cadets okay so that is a good thing uh, and uh, you should be proud of this we are proud of this and uh, when uh, when you go for internship you have to be uh, open minded okay it's not like uh, i cannot do this job or it's not for me uh, especially uh, when you are uh, i'm talking about the engine cadets when you are in engine room and you are asked to do something don't feel that this is not my job or someone else's job this is for your training because you are going to be officers and when you become officers you will be asking people to do this so if you know the job uh, you will feel confident in asking anyone else uh, to do the job so uh, as captain dogra also said learn learn on hand means you you should have hands on experience with everything whatever goes on in engine room okay no matter uh, no matter which ship you go which uh, senior you have on board it's uh, when you go on board take interest in everything do everything uh, whatever you feel okay this uh, i can learn something new today do everything uh, show your interest uh, to your seniors uh, of course you will be reporting to second engineer and chief officer uh, for deck cadets so show interest you uh, tell them that sir i want to learn this i want to learn this that is very important and uh, yes once you uh, in your first ship if you are able to uh, get a hang of a lot of things that will help you for your entire career thank you so much sir this was really helpful and just I'm to sure... just to add sorry yes sir, please continue yeah. yeah please continue uh, yeah so uh chobe ji if you remember our first ship was uh, together was fontana in nyk sm yes. uh, so that ship was 1977 built okay so when this uh, when they announce the name of the ship for me the, uh, all my other cadets and office people they were literally laughing like oh you are going on that ship okay so initially i felt is uh, like you know oh, they giving me very bad ship and blah blah whatever okay so uh, when i reach on board ship uh, the first job which was given to me was cleaning toilet okay so uh, there is nothing shame in that okay i'll tell you why it is important if you know how to clean toilet when you are officer that is how you will catch your crew that it is not clean if you don't know how to clean it what you will catch your crew is it right or wrong how you will teach your crew if you don't know how to do mooring you just study on paper uh, if you have not done it yourself on uh, the mooring station itself then how you will tell that this is right or wrong and same thing in engine room 
if you have not opened something and you have not seen the internal parts at all so you will fix it upside down and we actually had an incident uh, where second engineer has put it wrong way uh, i i am not sure which part was it for the main engine and the cylinder didn't work uh, when we try to fire so uh, this is a big mistake okay and these all things you will get to learn only during cadetship i'm telling you as soon as you have stars on your shoulder no one will teach you okay you will not get chance to learn because you are expected to know everything the only time you will learn is when you have a line on your shoulder when you are a cadet okay cadet people will uh, take sympathy they will try to teach you and nothing is expected from you so take advantage of this time So, so there is one of our faculty members from third years, and uh, he always tells us that there is no job called as a small job in a profession like merchant navy. So now it all makes sense when you're sharing your experience. So thank you so much for that. Uh, so, so next question is um, inclined more towards the technical part. So, what are your opinion on uh, the maritime vision 2030? Yeah, uh, I'll I'll uh, not uh, only talk about uh, 2030. Let's talk about 2050. okay so uh, currently uh, if you see any of the marpol regulations coming in nowadays are all focused on the uh, air pollution side the annex 6 marpol annex 6 okay yeah this is uh, because the industry has realized the uh, not only our industry the entire uh, uh, the climate change and all those things are happening because of all this and uh, last year uh, if you know uh, this 2020 imo 2020 sulfur cap I, i'm sure all of you were must be aware of this uh, we had to take up a big project for uh, our 250 ships we got uh, things uh, changed a lot of things scrubber installation and all those things uh, this uh, this is uh, and for uh, if you were cadets on some of the ships maybe you will be joining now uh, you will not see that but i was i am just talking about the experience the what you get when something like this comes up so imo has come up with this this was uh, imo 2020 was considered one of the big things but 2030 is bigger okay last year there was this mepc meeting uh, mepc 75 meeting where they have come up with new regulations because of this a lot of older ships will be scrapped newer ships will be built so yes like captain dogra said we sail sailed on a ship which was built in 1977 and we sailed on that ship in 2007 i think yeah that was 30 31 years old that time so uh, you you may not face certain uh, similar scenario because those kind of ships may be scrapped because of the regulation yeah so the this uh, 2030 vision is uh, purely based on the decarbonization part and uh, things are changing we are moving away from the fossil fuels for uh, propulsion and uh, power generation on board and uh, there are now we have already got a lot of dual fuel engines using lng as fuel you know lng co2 emission factor is less than the other hydrocarbons uh, other uh, fuels which we have now and then uh, there are trials going on for hydrogen uh, and methanol as fuel okay and uh, yes uh, this there there are uh, as per imo there are uh, short term long, uh, mid mid term and long term measures which they are incorporating so currently we are already moving from short term to uh, mid term now so mid term will be this particular e xi cii all these things coming up when you are sailing you will be involved a lot uh, remember uh, this is 2021 in 2030 you will be at a senior position those who are sailing yes so uh, you will be involved in a lot of projects so a lot to look forward to for all you guys and these are exciting times okay uh, i always say these are exciting times because uh, you will realize when you go on a ship see i have not seen a ship with dual fuel engines but uh, uh, you people definitely you will go on a ship because these things are started coming up then you may also sail on ships with methanol fuels with hydrogen fuel hydrogen fuel cells a lot of uh, research is going on and uh, these are exciting times basically moving forward so lot to look forward to you, you for you guys 
change is all change is always exciting sir and uh, i'm pretty sure that uh, while we're talking about 2030 in 2030 we'll be giving a you know a kind of a webinar to our juniors and we'll be telling them that 2050 may there are more exciting times coming up so change is change is the best thing that uh, is un- under this profession uh, captain vijendra any insights on the same yeah well uh, chobe sir has already um, covered uh, most of the technical stuff so i think i will add only on the autonomous uh, ships uh, recently imo was uh, collecting uh, informations and uh, like uh, i was also participating with them uh, for uh, making regulations for autonomous ships so like uh, we have already completed it so i think uh, imo will should be coming out uh, with the regulations about autonomous ships so i believe uh, maybe uh, well is years away but uh, maybe by 2030 you will have some insights and information on uh, you know completely autonomous ships coming around so i think uh, the cadets uh, or the juniors uh, officers especially they should be keeping updated uh, with their uh, you know the how to play the games uh, probably mobile or a ps4 or something they should keep it updated uh, because i think that is how the ships will be operated in the future yeah and captain vijendra on the same um, do you think that for us as seafarers like the people are just starting do you think it is beneficial with the autonomous ship or not yeah well it is actually a debatable point uh, if you look at the jobs aspect i i don't think there will be much difference because somebody has to operate ships yes uh, junior positions uh, will have some uh, uh, damages but uh, overall the things will not change so much yeah but technical team job will increase a lot uh, they have to keep up with the uh, system uh, all around uh, and you know but is still years away uh, is like too early to give out more information on that Just add, sir. Yeah. Yeah, sir. Please continue. Uh, just to add to what Captain Dogra said, autonomous ships. Uh, you don't think uh, that when autonomous ships comes, our jobs are at. <laughs> uh, we don't fear for your jobs because uh, when ships comes, they are machines, and machines cannot operate on their own. We need human beings. Either you are on board or ashore, but you uh, uh, skilled people are uh, people are required for uh, running ships. whether uh, on board and uh, in our times we used to think uh, uh, okay on board if there is any electrical problem there is a patti saab who will do it so for for you this uh, this thing i will tell you this you, it has to change when you go on board uh, there are a lot of things uh, like uh, currently also uh, our company we are involved in smart ship project so it's not uh, aut- uh, autonomous now but uh, we are working towards that so ships can be operated from ashore okay but again uh, there and in that team i i would uh, tell you in that team we had we have a lot of uh, fourth engineers who had quit sailing after doing one sail or two sail as fourth engineer some third engineers some even uh, uh, say, sailed on one ship some even college pass outs we have taken in that team because you have done your studies you understand things and sometimes of course uh, the career growth path is not uh, too lucrative there okay you have to uh, of course sail for uh, have, uh, having a good career in future but uh, people who had to quit because of any reason we have taken those people in our team and then we have uh, Uh, used their uh, expertise uh, in the sense their knowledge their qualification marine knowledge marine qualification technical knowledge in uh, running ships and uh, we have started this project still there are people on board it's not like autonomous ship but it is a smart ship which we call and uh, we can monitor the ships from ashore definitely and this is one step towards that autom- autonomous and don't worry about the jobs will be there as you said rajni so that uh, these are very exciting times and good time to be alive in the merchant navy profession so the next question will be taken up by tsunami 
Yes, sir. Thank you, sir, for actually putting us to ease about autonomous ships because I've been really anxious about this topic and I couldn't find any clear answer on the net. So my next question would be like, apart from the course curriculum, what are some other courses a future mariner should dwell into, like we as cadets, to improve our knowledge and make us a better seafarer from the rest of the lot? Mm, yeah, well, uh, actually, the question is uh, like quite open ended. Uh, well, you, uh, tsunami. You have to tell me one thing. As you you are talking about improving yourself while being on board, or uh, you are asking me about being onshore. So onshore, like we as cadets. Okay. So well. Uh, for cadets, um, I think you should focus on your studies, what you have on hand now. The, there is nothing special you have to do because Tolani is uh, literally, they cover every topic possible for your level. And in fact, they cover extra uh, like IMO regulations and et cetera, uh, which will be very interesting uh, towards the end of the course. And uh, I believe uh, to start your career, uh, Tolani is the best launching pad. Uh, you are at the right place. Take the opportunity and take interest and just launch yourself properly. Uh, make your goals. Uh, pass your MMD exams on time. Uh, earn some money. And with the money you have on hand, you can think about your uh, future plans. Uh, doing some extra courses or uh, taking up some extra membership, uh, making networking, etc. But I think at the moment, uh, you are in a good hands, good place. Just uh, take advantage of it. That is all you have to do. It. So, okay, so could you also mention the courses we can do while we are a marine engineer or uh, off on the nautical side, like while we are sailing? While you are sailing. Okay, yeah. so it's like uh, preparing for onshore jobs. So, well, uh, first thing is you have to select which direction you have to proceed because uh, there are a number of fields uh, which you can uh, go out uh, on shore. Okay, so like first and very simple traditional way is going into a shipping company. Uh, shipping company as in a management or owning company. So uh, there are so many roles in that. It's a very traditional approach you don't really need any uh, extra courses or something to do, but uh, the more experience you have, uh, the better chances of getting a job there. And then uh, next, uh, you have opportunity of a commercial department, uh, ship chartering, ship broking, okay? Brokers and ship chartering. Uh, there are courses in ICS, uh, which is international, uh, Institute for uh, Charter Ship Brokers. Uh, you can do the course there. Uh, it's a self-study course. Uh, you give online exams, uh, not so difficult for Tolani cadets. And then uh, next uh, field I will say is uh, marine insurance. Uh, you can uh, either select uh, UK uh, CII Charter in Institute for Insurance, or you can go for Australia NCIF. Uh, again, uh, they are mostly self-study courses. Uh, it's all online examinations. And uh, then next will be maritime law. Uh, if you like, you can argue well, I think uh, you can approach uh, maritime law. And uh, next will be MBA. MBA is just uh, like standard uh, traditional way of approach again. Uh, but MBA, I think doesn't really appreciate your uh, maritime knowledge. It is more about uh, managing uh, things. So doesn't cover that place. And on the technical side, I think uh, you can do uh, some uh, shipbuilding things, uh, naval architecture stuff. Uh, there is IMRST, uh, which is a very technical group. Uh, they don't really give out some courses, but they have a very good networking uh, place and uh, you can gain knowledge from that. Uh, well, I think uh, about engine engineering, uh, I think Chobeji can cover better. 
Yes, uh, to add to whatever uh, Captain Logra said, uh, there are a lot of other things since we were talking about autonomous ships. Uh, while you are sailing also, you will be encountering a lot of uh, things which may need uh, some IT skills. And when you, uh, not on board, but when you shift ashore, if you have a, a vision of shifting ashore, then uh, definitely you should, uh, and that depends on your interest. If you are more interested towards the IT side of it uh, or creating something, some solutions, then uh, IT courses, uh, there are a lot of things, internet of things, AI, ML, there are a lot of things which you can learn. Okay, because uh, all these uh, things have got applications in uh, uh, shipping industry. Uh, nowadays, we are also using a lot of uh, these stuff uh, in creating uh, some solutions. Uh, like I said, there is one uh, smart ship, which we call it, it is based on IoT, Internet of Things. And then we have AI, ML, all these things are uh, being used. So, uh, um, be keeping the marine knowledge which you have as the base and then you build up on this depending on your interest if you want to go through a uh, ship building side as captain dogra said you can uh, go towards that and and if you uh, are more inclined towards the software side of it you can do some uh, software courses ai ml and other things languages learning and uh, nowadays uh, a lot of new technologies are coming in uh, or energy saving uh, because of these regulations there are a lot of technologies like dual fuel engines of course when you are uh, sailing with a company you will be uh, uh, doing these courses uh, by default the dual fuel engine courses electronic engine courses uh, all these things and uh, alternate uh, fuel uh, using on board so there are a lot of things when we when you start sailing or if you uh, even uh, think of going to for any particular direction you will come to know a lot of things when you do research okay there are i can do this course and i can excel in this field like that. You can pursue accordingly yes uh, thank you so much for that and so this is the last question from our end one of the participants has mentioned that for a better sustainable career which one is a good option, like being in one company for several years or being open to different companies? Well, actually, uh, this is all about yourself, uh, how you deal with this, because uh, every company cannot offer you everything. Okay. Some company, you, you may like the food, as simple as that, but uh, some company, you may like the money. Some company, you may like the promotion. Uh, so the thing is, what you want from life. Okay, so like, uh, for example, I wanted to uh, be a master soon. Okay, I want to uh, get my license very fast. Okay, so like I, I started uh, my career in 2007 uh as a carrot which is a uh, fourth year for the deck side that time so i was uh commanding my first ship in 2017 that's like 10 years okay so i'm not talking getting license i'm talking about commanding my own ship so if you stick to one company this may happen this may not happen so you have to make your own decisions in this uh way uh, how you want to proceed with your uh, you know achievements especially but again uh, if you are uh, planning to get short job uh, in long term yeah when you are in senior ranks uh, stick to one companies uh, in junior rank uh, you can switch but it is not advisable yes uh, talking about switching companies uh, just to tell you, I have sailed with one company and then I am working ashore with one company. So this is my second company only after uh, passing out from college. So, uh, yes, I have uh, stick to the same company, but from your side, uh, you have to see how satisfied you are with the uh, work culture on board, with, the, with everything, whatever you get from the company. Okay. And uh, uh, then uh, if you are uh, not 
fully satisfied you should change you should go for a change and try to find out a better company where you can excel uh, properly as captain dogra said if you want uh, faster promotions there will be uh, more switchings you will have to do and uh, at senior rank definitely you should try to stick uh, the same company because uh, in the long term in the long run you will have uh, you will see that there are uh, certain uh, benefits which you get uh, by sticking with the same company so yes at the initial uh, stage you can switch depending on how satisfied you are with the salary with the work culture and everything Yes, sir. Rightly, sir. Tsunami. Yes. Sir. Yeah. Uh, can I just uh, jog through your question answer that box uh, which is down below because there are some very small questions, um, but I think they must be very curious about it. De- definitely. Just sir. quickly. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So first question, Arjun Singh. Uh, this guy is asking about courses you can do at home. So. Uh, there is nothing special you should be doing now as i told you earlier is tolani is the best place you are in the right hands just follow what they are telling you you will be good but when you are on board ship then it's a whole new story okay so you have to start learning get further knowledge now you are at home uh, probably you can Uh, get to know more about new regulations and stuff but i think tolani will be covering everything don't worry about it then next is mrityunjay singh uh, which ship is more beneficial for beginners it doesn't matter which ship you are going okay yes money if you ask me yeah surely some gas carrier or tanker but other than money it doesn't matter which ship you are doing knowledge is everything think that okay and uh, next is uh, when will our placement start in tmi uh, well you have to answer uh, you have to get the answer from your faculty for this so uh, actually i don't know when it will start now so but in our time uh, it started uh, right about in the final year so no need to hurry now and uh, Mr. Mohanty, I am. I am. You exams are cancelled this year, so sorry, I cannot answer that for you. You have to ask your faculty for that. Uh, next is Rohan. Uh, what do you enjoy the most while on board ship? I enjoy the most is working because other than that, I don't have time to enjoy anything. When you are on board ship, I don't think you will have time to enjoy anything. you do your work uh, enjoy your food go to sleep that's the uh, time table you will have uh, well uh, as a officer yeah you can enjoy some times uh, between the watches yeah you can play games or uh, like my ship had xbox on board so we were playing yes uh, but don't think it's a dull environment there there is a party on say some uh, sundays uh, every month at least so there will be something going around uh what is better according to you tanker or bulk carrier for me bulk carrier sure tanker is a headache a uh, bulk carrier uh, you clean the hatches you get money tanker you clean so many things nothing there so bulk carrier sure you have long sailings uh, you will have time for doing your studies and enjoying your life tankers maybe may not be depending on the size uh it is all on uh, spectacles oh you want to wear spectacles yes mmd has some allowances but i'm not sure about it so just check that uh, with the mmd about what allowances they have now uh how many years to to be captain uh, okay so and this doesn't depend on uh, uh like uh, uh siam kaif yes so this guy is asking about how many years it took for me it took uh, start of the career to getting the license was 9 years so but remember one thing i didn't stop for examinations i didn't take break okay i complete my sailing period i gave exam and fortunately i was able to clear it smoothly 
so i think 9 8 to 9 years uh, should be a ideal uh, situation i could have done it one year faster but you know uh, i was enjoying a bit little bit okay so next is how you manage professional life social life on board ship well on board ship be professional social life uh, not so much because uh when you are with different nationalities you never know how they react what they like what they don't like just keep it professional hi by good uh, keep it to yourself socializing during party is good but uh, i will still say keep a hobby be with your hobby instead of troubling other people around and uh, how do we approach companies outside campus well uh, just like uh, uh, any other job application you keep sending your cv around different companies uh, somebody will give you a call and uh, as usual uh, i think uh, jesh has not done any kind of part time jobs or, or something before right from uh, school it seems and then uh, i don't know how to say the name but uh, digitalized station is taking high speed uh, skills yes so which skills you need uh, well i think uh, you, everyone should develop their uh, digital skills uh, technical skills because uh, in the future there will be so many automations uh, so many computers processors uh, networking all around the ship that uh, you should be knowing so i'll suggest uh, take up some uh, minor courses for uh, getting uh, some idea about it because uh, i believe uh, you cannot put everything to one person on board and then uh, you know uh, you can just uh, okay could you give some uh, details regarding maritime law okay maritime law is just like uh, normal law uh you do llb you do llm but your specialization will be maritime now so you have to find some colleges uh india also have colleges uh and uk is a uh, very well renowned uh, in maritime law but uh, then is talking about money i think you better sail now focus on that make some money and then think about maritime law what is the right time to change company there is no right or wrong uh for me uh for me is what is good for you and what is wrong for you okay there is no right or wrong okay so the idea about changing company depends on you you want to change you change don't look behind make decisions that's why i don't like mobile people want support when you have mobile on hand they want support there is no support you want to change change it you don't want to change don't change it but make a decision bs nautical sciences or mining which is better future according to placement requirements oh so is the competition okay so placement requirement doesn't matter uh, everyone have uh, equal opportunities as far as sailing goes uh, shore job i think well always i see the grass is greener on the other side so engineering have better chance for shore job but uh, for deck side 100% you need to do masters license and then shore job uh, below that no point of uh, going ashore how is nyk as a company how was your experience in nyk nyk great company uh, very system uh, systematic they have uh, everything in order so i think you should have no troubles going there uh, very nice uh, it was a fun actually they gave me all the ships uh, went to scrap right after i signed up management company is good or ownership uh, i think kf you should focus on completing your c time at the moment instead of uh, selecting management or ownership if you get a option of management or ownership yeah surely ownership but mm, well i think you should focus on completing it first can you explain a bit more about maritime law and how to pursue it mm, well you are already doing a bachelor degree on hand okay 
so you try to find uh, some maritime law course uh, there is something called google i think everyone knows just input that maritime law you have all the information there uh, there is nothing specific to tell in this there are so many colleges around just uh, use it but don't use it and google for uh, misinformation okay uh, the google you can find some mis misinformation also so double check before you do anything what keeps you motivated to stay focused on ship uh, i think probably jail uh, if you do screw up uh, you go to jail you want to get punished then uh, let your focus uh, go around uh i can tell you uh, uh, as an officer uh, when chief officer i work straight uh, more than 48 hours so uh, you think yourself uh, if uh, as a chief officer i make mistake uh, during that and i don't stay focused what will happen somebody lose life somebody pollution will happen or something serious will go bad and uh, who is responsible you have a license you are responsible that's how simple it is what may be the stipend for onboard for training marine engineer uh, well our time we were getting 400 dollars so i don't know how is the situation now uh, as per future what course should we focus on side pursuing degree help in the future was in tag or Oh, well, Sidan Gupta, you are asking too many details for a webinar. I think uh, you better contact Rajnish Chobeji. They can, he can tell you uh, more detail on this. Thank you so much. Uh, Monty, very last minute, you put one more question. If one does not have, uh, does not get in Torani, his or her 12 sir is what to stay and prepare to get into the next year. Oh, Monty, this is very serious question. Uh, if you don't have anything else to do, if you don't have any other opportunities coming up, yes, it is worth to stay. But if you have uh, some good opportunities other place, mm, you should give a try. Uh, how many companies give good sum of money, but promotion is very slow. Is that a company worth? Yeah, sure. Gagan, uh, listen to one thing very important is how long you plan to sail. That matters a lot. Uh, if you want good money, but slower promotion is okay with you. Yes, it's very much worth. But uh, you have to think about your family and stuff and how it is to work out after that. If anyone can join cruise line after bulk carrier, is it possible? Cruise line can, uh, can anyone can join anytime. Okay. So it's all depend on market demand. If they require, they will take you. Uh, there is nothing stopping you. Okay. I think uh, tsunami that, that was a, uh, uh, rapid fire answering round uh, I think must have covered everyone yes sir thank you so much for taking out your time to do that okay so uh, with this we have reached the end of our event and I must say that we had a lot to take away today and I would like to thank Captain Dogra and Mr. Rajneesh Chaube for taking their time off their busy schedule and accommodating this program uh, your insights have put a lot of questions and doubts that we had at least our institute has come up with this remarkable venture wherein every week we will have prominent people having authority in their area of expertise interacting with us. Uh, may I ask the audience to kindly check the chat box where the link has been pasted. It would be great if you could um, you know, send in your feedback so that we know where, which areas to improve. I would also like to thank the audience for their overwhelming support and participation. So once again, thank you everyone for logging in. I wish you all a very pleasant weekend ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Thank you so much uh, for calling us here. Uh, actually, I felt very nice talking to you, everyone. Uh, I, I would be very uh, like happy to help you in the future also if you like any advice from me. Uh, and finally, my uh, Tolani faculties, uh, I'm really thankful to them. I really appreciate that time when they were doing things. 
I didn't understand the importance. Uh, that time I felt is why I have to get a morning six o'clock and do PT. Okay, but no, I, now I know why it is there, why parade is there, and why we have to do what we were doing that time. Uh, the important thing is you don't realize that time what is happening, but you will get the meaning in the future, finally. And uh, last line, uh, knowledge. If you have knowledge, success will follow you. And it is true. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for calling again. And uh, thank you to all the cadets. And yes, we would love to help you uh, anytime you, know, you can get in touch. And uh, uh, anything, anywhere in your life, you need any guidance, we are always there. And thanks for our faculties uh, for giving us a chance to interact with the cadets. Okay. Thank, thank you. I'll end up here. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank sir. You.